What's going on everybody? My name is Tenebris Infinite and welcome to 10 beginner tips for Generation Zero. So, in Generation Zero, it is the robot apocalypse. You are a young Swedish boy or girl and you've just come back from a hunting trip to be attacked on your way back home. When you got home, you found out that everything has kind of gone to hell and these robots seem to have maybe potentially killed everybody here in Sweden. Luckily enough, outside of having some of the smoothest dance moves in all of Sweden, you feel prepared and ready for this robot attack because Sweden had been getting ready the whole time for some sort of an invasion. So, this whole world is absolutely covered with gear and resources that you can find amidst all of the wreckage and all of the carnage. The first tip is to loot absolutely everything and look for gear everywhere. As you walk around in the world, you will gradually uncover locations, and as you uncover these locations, it's in your absolute best interest to go and look for all of these boxes and see what you can find. So on top of looking inside of cars and vehicles and sheds and various buildings scattered along the main road, it's a very good idea for you to kind of take your time and explore the outer areas of the map here in the archipelago of Sweden. So uh, a prime example actually is right here. You spawn right at Ittervik and if you take a quick jog just through uh, the forest here you'll be able to find a hunter's house and in the hunter's house you can actually find a hunting rifle which will give you a serious leg up on the robots. Uh, it'll give you a weapon that can actually take down their armor as the Mueller PP is not very good at dealing with actual armor. So now you should have all the gear and ammunition that you need in order to progress further on into the island. And we'll be getting into some more in-depth topics about the gameplay here in Generation Zero with tip number two. So tip number two is utilizing your environment to your advantage. Generation Zero has probably one of the best encapsulations of Sweden's stark European beauty that I think I've ever seen in a video game. Uh, so it's not just really pretty to look at, though. Most of this environment is entirely useful for you to make strategies and plan out ways to attack the robots effectively and... Um, actually actually kill them effectively so a number of things that you'll want to take stock of is things like fresh vehicles that you'll be able to utilize as explosives it takes maybe about four clips from the dilapidated molar but once you get better weapons in the game like the shotgun and the rifle blowing up the vehicles is much easier and i think i have a robot over here for me to make an example of I don't have the very basic weapons because I've made it much further into the game uh, and it's kind of hard for me to actually find basic weapons, but um, let's see, will this guy come close enough to the car? I think he will. And there you go, a perfect example. If you blow up the vehicle, it's going to be a little bit easier than actually attacking the robot half of the time. Uh, Again, as long as you have a good enough weapon to do so. Okay, so now for step number three, we're just jumping right into it. Step number three is that every single robot has a weak point. Most of the time, it's really easy to tell out the weak point by looking for some sort of a gas tank on them. We're going to use this military class doggo here just to kind of prove our point. So let's throw our flare. He's going to turn around. And then we can simply give him a shot, give him another shot, run away, but that's okay. He's gonna try to rush us here. But we were able to take him down pretty effectively just by shooting right at his weak point. Again, we're gonna kinda do the same thing here. Let's try to distract them. Get up a little bit closer here, because I'm used to working with a choke, I guess. Yeah. 
Oh. We got tackled, but that's fine. Okay. So now that we're out of flares, we're going to have to use our mobility against them. And we'll be getting into things like essential skills so that your mobility is maximized. Uh, I think in our next tip here. So let's really quickly just pop this guy. There we go. And again, kind of scraping. Just so that they can't get much of a clear shot on us. And then we got our last one right here. So there we go, just by aiming at their weak points, we were able to take down a team of, like, maybe nine? <laughs> nine doggos just on our own with a single 12-gauge dilapidated shotgun. Uh, so yeah, all you gotta do is utilize flares and some effective movement in order to get around these enemies, and you'll be able to take them out pretty efficiently. Okay, so now for step number four, let's start getting into the skill points. So Generation Zero in its own way is almost like a light RPG within a first person shooter within an open world game. So as you go through the game, you will acquire skill points and those will help you level up. And as you level up, you'll need to spend those skill points so that your character can actually deal with the threat of the robots. Uh, how you choose to upgrade your character is entirely up to you, but we'll be going over a few of the essential skill points here and now. So essential skill number one would be spotting intel. Uh, outside of that, you also want to then get the inquisitive mind so that you can get the most experience out of the missions that you play and complete. Another essential skill is the lock picking skill. You'll find a variety of lock doors and they cannot be opened unless you have the lock picking skill. So uh, what you'll find behind those doors is usually the better upgrades, the better weapons, and the better types of ammunition. So you really, really want to spec out and get yourself lock picking and the inquisitive mind very early on. The next one is a bit of a no-brainer, but you'll really want to upgrade your reload speed. Uh, and then, on top of that, the first armor upgrade is also incredibly useful because the plus 10% bullet damage uh, resistance will, again, just keep you alive for longer. Next up, when it comes to movement and mobility, you really want to upgrade your running speed. Uh, the higher your running speed is, the easier it is to actually evade things like bullets, things like melee attacks, and all of the other things that the robots are going to be throwing at you. And then right beneath the run speed is your carry capacity. And you really, really need to upgrade your carry capacity to the max level as quickly as possible. You'll run into so many inventory issues using only just the first three slots, and even when you have the whole inventory unlocked, you'll still be having a bit of a rough time managing your inventory. So, for tip number five, uh, tip number five is going to be manually mapping your waypoints. And this might just be a thing that's entirely up to preference for the player, but for myself, I find it's much more efficient for me to look on the map as to where I want to go. Say I want to go over to this bunker here. And instead of constantly checking the map while I'm running along to make sure that I'm going in the right direction and to make sure that I'm not getting lost, I can really easily follow this map marker that's popped up on my screen here. Uh, 
All right, so we made it here in just under two minutes. No fast traveling involved, and we managed to get a nice little scenic route through Sweden there. Okay, so now for the next tip. Uh, the next tip, tip number six, is to practice your aim. So there's a handy location here early on in Generation Zero, uh, just before the city of Saltham, just before the bridge to that city, uh, where you could stop off at this nice little farm here and practice your aim against this kind of shooting target here. And it's actually really handy because some of the guns have much more spread than you would expect. And uh, sometimes recoil can affect things a little bit more than, again, you would expect. So it's always a good idea to come back here whenever you do pick up a new gun to just kind of see how it, how it fires and how accurate it is. I think that we got a pretty accurate shot there, but that's because we got <laughs> a freaking sight on at that kind of distance. Let's try it out with our pistol and see if we can get a decent shot here. It might have been a little bit high. Yeah, it was. It was just up there in the seven ring, so obviously I got to practice a little bit more with my clock. But um, but yeah, I think that this is a really handy early on tool that you can use to kind of improve your aim. Now we're going to do seven and eight kind of at the same time here. So for seven and eight, we are covering traps and using stealth to your advantage. So as you can see, we have a robot dog here and we're at the naval base where there happens to be a quite few bit of enemies actually. So what we've done here is we've used our silenced rifle to shoot our gun and kind of get their attention. And they're going to go to the spot where we shot our bullet, hopefully. Stealth is entirely a game of patience here. Then, we're able to take out the dog with our trap. It would have been more effective to hit multiples of them at the same time. But now that we've kind of been able to set things up, we can take these guys out really easily here. Because we've got ourselves kind of hunkered down into a really nice defensive position all through the utility of stealth. Alright, and so for tip number nine, I would say always carry with you an exorbitant amount of health items and healing items. Um, whatever you think you need, maybe double it, maybe triple it. I tend to triple it because I know that that's going to make things the smoothest for me when I'm running around playing in solo here. Alright, for tip number 10. Tip number 10 is that there's no shame in running away when you've encountered a robot or a group of robots that's stronger than you or more difficult than what you can handle. Uh, in the end, if you want to stick around and fight the robot and burn all of your revives and all of your ammunition trying to kill the one robot, sure, you can totally do that, but it might be smarter to actually run away and wait for the robot to maybe lose interest in you. And then you'll, first off, get actual experience for fleeing the fight here. There we go. So you only receive a fraction of the experience that you would actually get for killing the opponent, but it means that there's no loss, actually, when you run away. There's only a benefit from it. Alright, so there we go. We have 10 beginner tips to help you get ahead in the beginning of your game here in Generation Zero. So hopefully these tips have helped you guys out. Uh, I do have future videos planned, going more in-depth about the skills, specializing, and uh, more in-depth about traps and all of that stuff. Uh, but that's all going to be in later uploads, so if you're interested in seeing that, you might want to consider subscribing. 
Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.